Hello, and welcome to my night library. On this week's episode of Balls Deep, we learned about the human body by helping perform an autopsy with a forensic pathologist from Phoenix, Arizona, which was extremely fun. I'm gonna die, and so are you. How and when remains to be determined, most likely by a forensic pathologist, such as Dr. Rebecca Shu, who operates out of Phoenix, Arizona capital of America's southwestern death state, where people have been coming to croak for going on 200 years. I realize that I have a lot of books written by medical examiners, coroners, and pathologists about the act of autopsies, most of which are kind of just like case studies of interesting things they saw in dead bodies when they died. Among my favorites are Where Death Delights, not quite ghost-written, because his name's on the freaking book, of Milton H. Halpern, who was the chief medical examiner of the city of New York, and actually kind of created that office, I believe, in the 40s and 50s. It's very exciting stuff, and essentially kind of perfect bedtime reading. There's also the picture section, which is always the best part of a book. I mean, that's half a head. That's what happens when you put a shotgun to your head. Now you see why I don't let my kids see my books. Of course not. I, I shouldn't be looking at this. <laughs> Halpern's career was so eventful, uh, he actually wrote a second set of memoirs that are called Autopsy, which comes in a uh, paperback, uh, perfect for taking on planes or trains with its own great picture section, too. The thing you realize from reading these autopsy books is for all the famous cases, you know, there's like hundreds more that were major media events at the time, basically trials of the century that we've completely lost. It's also just interesting all the different ways the human body can die and what you can find out once it has died from there. Okay, Thomas, you're on. We're draining stuff. Now what's this coming out? Is this blood or? Well, this is probably decompositional fluid. See, if you had an ammonia or something, you're gonna have this fluid on your chest. Uh -huh. But I need to know how much. It's about 225. 225, you can write SS for serosanguinous fluid. One of the things that's interesting about Dr. Sue is uh, she's not only a forensic pathologist, but also a funeral director, which is not somebody who carves open the body to figure out why it dies, but somebody who embalms the body and prepares it for uh, burial. So this is sort of the training grounds for this kind of thing. And this would be a mortician's kit that they would use to actually do makeup. Morticians are worried about how everything looks. Pathologists are worried about chopping it up and getting it off their table as quickly right. as possible. So obviously there's a little conflict of interest sometimes on certain things. In terms of funeral direction, one of the more popular books uh, people recommend people read is uh, Thomas Lynch's The Undertaking, Life Studies from the Dismal Trade. And I believe Thomas Lynch worked as a funeral director, but he identifies more as a poet. If you don't want to get into like the real like nitty gritty, maybe this is up your alley. Not mine, however. Um, yeah, not mine at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this out of here. You know, the real treasure trove is Rebecca Shoes. She's got a library that's just completely unbeatable. Her pathology books involve any manner of bad death. Well, first of all, I'd never heard the term pneumoscrotum, which I guess is air in the scrotum. I certainly didn't realize that was a possible side effect of uh, CPR. You know what? As I get older and the more I see, uh, the more I appreciate just being able to breathe and have a heartbeat. As long as you're not the one in the body bag, your day was not that bad. That's true. Okay? <laughs> Maybe the best book of all will be the one that she writes. I hope. And gives me a copy for my night library. All right, see y'all.